Hello and welcome to another Decrepit Gaming Hero Quest video. Today I'm going to be painting the Dread Sorcerer from the base set. I'm going to be following what little card art there is. It's actually not even a card, it's a booklet. But there you can see it. Um, it's various greys and purples. I'm going to try and stick reasonably closely to the card art if I can. The first colour I'm going to choose is going to be Ancient Honey, which is the closest colour to cream that I have. It's not very creamy, but I'm going to wash it at the end, which will dull it down a bit. Again, trying to stick to the Army Painter Speed Paints range because I'm just enjoying using them. I've found the vast majority of the time you get away with one coat of whatever colour it is you're going to use, unless it's a really, really translucent pale colour, then sometimes it can take two coats or more. The next colour up is going to be Hoplite Gold, and I'm going to use it to paint, obviously, the jewellery around his neck, the pendant around his neck, and both ends of his staff, and his crown. This is the last minion or bad guy in the base set and I'm really looking forward to getting on to painting the four character models and then it's on to some games which is what I'm really looking forward to. So the colour around the outside of the sorcerer's cloak uh, both at the hem at the bottom and round the outsides of the sleeves and round the outsides of where it would button up um, is like a, a pale bluey grey colour. So what I've done here is I've used three drops of Battleship Grey and mixed in one drop of Tyrian Navy to darken it down a bit and I think it has provided quite an accurate colour match for the card art. And it's nice to see that you can mix these speed paints quite easily. Come up with your own colours, your own shades. Shouldn't be a problem. You also don't need to worry about being too neat with this. Be as neat as you can, obviously. But we're not going to be touching anything up here with white paint because the next step will cover up any mistakes we make. So I'm going to paint his cloak straight Tyrian navy, which is a bluey blacky colour. So dark, dark, dark blue. Um, it's quite nice and it's quite suitable, I think, for a reasonable match for the picture in the booklet. This colour will cover straight over any mistakes that you've made from the previous colour that we painted. So we didn't need to go back and with our white like I would traditionally do. Any colour that you're painting which is really light and you're putting a dark colour over the top, you can mostly get away with going straight over the top of it. Now I'm going to switch to my dead white colour and this is just to touch up areas on the very front of the clothing. Um, he has some red gems type chain mail type stuff hanging off his chest. I'm just going to make sure that they get a healthy coat of white because I want the next colours to be quite vibrant and not have any underlying shadows. The next colour up is going to be Grim Black and I'm going to use it to paint the insides of his sleeves at the ends, the ends of his arms, the ends of his elbows I should say. Um, it's just the out of shadow effect. You could have just used a Tyrian Navy but I'm choosing a darker colour. It's not very obvious in the picture, in the booklet, 
what color his staff is, the shaft of his staff. I'm going to choose to use ruddy fur, which I find is a nice brown color. Um, I'm going to choose to paint it in a wood type color. You could quite easily just have painted the entire staff in hop like gold, and it would have been fine, but I'm just choosing to add another color to the model, just to break it up a little bit. I'm now going to use some Slaughter Red just to paint those little gem type, um, it's hard to tell what they are, it might be chainmail or some sort of armour underneath his uh, vest. This is quite bright but it will be dulled down at the end with a wash. I'm going to use Moody Mauve which is a really nice purple colour to paint the inside of the front of his clothing and also his hood and round the nape of his neck and the front of the garment that covers his head as well. I don't know how else to say that. You'll see yourself exactly where I'm painting. This particular miniature is really easy to paint. Um, don't be intimidated by the fact that he's a big bad guy. Um, he's no more detailed than any of the other models. And once you get your colour palette chosen, just paint them. Simple as that. I'm going to use Desolate Brown to paint the skin tones and the arms of and the hands of the model. Um, it's not brown at all. It's an olive green colour. It even says on the side of the bottle that it's olive green. If you look at the picture in the wee booklet, his skin is greenish. So, hence why I'm using this colour to paint the skin. Now to dull down some of those bright colours, especially around the yellow around his neck and around the red on his chest. A good healthy dose of Reichland Flesh Wash. Let it pull if you want and once it dries it'll add free shading and it'll also dull those bright colours down. You can't really go wrong here when you're washing the model, just make sure you hit areas that you want to dull down a bit, including the metal work on the staff. And it's now on to painting the base, and I'm going to use the same colour that I've always used for the bases of my Hero Quest bad guys. This fella is no different. Um, he may be a slightly higher rank bad guy, but he's still a bad guy in my eyes, so he gets painted the same colour as the rest of them. For easy reference, really, for players. Once they see a grey base, they'll know bad guy. And I'm now on to varnishing, and yet again, I'll say it in every video, the Hero Quest video anyway, varnish your miniatures. Get yourself some matte varnish or gloss if you prefer a shiny look. Varnish your miniatures because they're going to be in and out of plastic trays, and they're going to pick up chips, crack, the paint will flake off, and we don't want that to happen. And that's it, miniature finished, and I'm quite happy with them. He looks reasonably like the picture in the booklet, which is what I set out to achieve. Um, he also looks suitably menacing in my eyes, and players will know exactly who he is when they see him on the table, and that's the whole point. I would like to thank you for watching my videos, and thank you for watching this video. And I would encourage you to watch some more of my Hero Quest videos if Hero Quest is what floats your boat. Um, there's going to be a lot more content coming in the near and also distant future. And thank you for watching the video again. If you haven't clicked the subscribe button, could I please ask you to click the subscribe button?
and see you in the next video.